Africa. This is our unit on Africa. Africa is one of the seven continents in the world. We live in North America, and you can see Africa right in the middle there. There are 54 countries and over 200 languages spoken in the continent of Africa. This is South Africa, one of the countries in that continent. There are big cities and rural farming communities. There are people with very little money and people with a lot of money, sometimes living right next to each other. All students in South Africa wear uniforms to school. Should this be a rule for us? This is the school that I visited in the country of South Africa. Now, you can't really see the whole class there, but there are about a hundred students in that classroom, that one class. This is pretty normal for this district in South Africa. It is not a well-off district. This is one of the buildings, and each building is separated by a, a lots of different walls, and the kids have to go outside. There all are no hallways, so the kids go outside to change classrooms. In this picture, you can see the car that I arrived in with my group. Now, there are no roads. There are no parking lots. That is why we are parked on the grass. The reason for this is that the teachers don't have cars. They walk to school. The kids don't get dropped off by their parents. They walk sometimes miles to school. This is after class. These are some of the kids in the school when they saw I had a camera. They weren't used to seeing that. This is one of my coworkers just hanging out with one of the kids after class. This is after class because all the kids are talking and um, just relaxed. During class, they are not like that. They are completely silent. In this picture, I wanted to point out a couple of things to you. One, the people through the window, you could see how some of the glass is broken. They don't really have money to replace those window panes, so they don't. Um, some of the desks, especially the one in the front on the left, you can see really well, um, is just a bunch of boards that are placed on top of a metal um, support system. They're not even screwed on or glued on or anything like that. It's just bare bones. And kids share desks. They share, sometimes they don't even have desks. They have to use their laps to write things down. This picture was very interesting to me because they do not have custodians at this school. So after the school day is over, they take turns in um, two of these young ladies right here have brooms. They are cleaning up the classroom themselves. And if they don't do it, nobody else does. One of the other things that they don't have in this district is running water. So if you need to um, get a drink of water, if you are parched, you have to go out into a courtyard like this one. In the middle of the courtyard, there is a pump that goes deep, deep, deep into the ground. And you have to pump this pump and, and water shoots out from the ground so that you can drink it. It is drinkable water. It is safe to drink, but it is pumped in from the ground that you have to pump yourself, which is kind of interesting. No running water also means no flushing toilets. Now what they have to do is they have to walk a long way away from their school and they have to go to this place called the latrines. Latrines are basically big holes that they dig in the ground, really, really, really deep holes, and then they build a structure over it so that your waste goes down into the hole and doesn't have to be flushed. I am going to show you an example of their latrines in a second. It's basically just a hole that you sit on. I'm going to do it really fast, so don't blink because you might miss it. I'm doing it fast because it's kind of gross. Here we go. 
Okay, so when I went to South Africa, I was with a group called Daktari, and they were a wildlife rescue group that also took some kids from a local village um, that was very poor, very not well off, and we would educate them for a week in our animal sanctuary at Daktari. And we rehabbed animals that might have been injured in Africa, and we taught the kids about the animals, we taught the kids about... um, Um, professions that they could go into in the tourism industry and how important the animals were to the country of South Africa and how much money it brought in. So we would teach them lots of different things. We would take them on nature hikes. We would, they would be in charge of taking care of some of the animals um, and learning, learning, learning all the time. We had a little hut that we had our classroom in and And let me show you some pictures. We also had time in our day where we could play games with the kids, and that was super fun too. A lot of my day was spent taking care of the animals, feeding the animals, giving them um, some exercise. There was a gecko in my bathroom that was just loose. There are lots of monkeys around everywhere. This was called a sugar baby, and its saliva was like poisonous. This was a porcupine, a giant porcupine that came to our camp every night, um, and we would feed it, of course. There was a donkey that uh, was blind, so we couldn't release the donkey back to the people because it couldn't survive on its own. Um, So lots of different animals, lots of different stuff to do. Now here is where we're getting into some of the things we're going to be doing today. If you looked behind the boys, there was a drum, and on that drum there was lots of different decorations, which also goes into our African mood mask unit. With most masks that you found in Africa, they would show emotions. What do you think these masks were used for? What kind of emotion do you see on the faces of these masks. What about this mask? What emotion do you see? What about this one? What mood is this person in? So before we start making your African masks, we're going to talk about some traits of African masks. So African masks have sections, and I will show you what I mean by that. African masks also have patterns. So if we look at this picture, there's a ton of masks on here, and I'm going to point out some of the sections and some of the patterns. In these close-ups right here, you can see some of the patterns that are on the masks. Here you can see sections. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we are going to write a list. And this list is going to be as many of the moods or emotions that you can come up with that you have felt, that you have heard people feel, that you have seen people feel, um, that you know exist, moods that exist. So I'm going to start it out by saying happy. Happy is an emotion. So like if you said like hungry, hungry really isn't an emotion. It is something that you feel in your body, But we're not really talking about physical feelings. We're talking about feelings like being happy. So I hope that gives you a good idea of what we need on this list. We are going to compare this list with all the other lists in the first grade. And we're going to see if you can come in first, if your class can come in first place. Now, I only give you a timed amount 
for this. Um, I believe it's going to be seven minutes. So whatever you can come up with in seven minutes, if people are calling out, I stop and I don't write anything. I only call on people. So if you raise your hand, make sure you have something to say. Make sure you have something to say that nobody else has already said or else you're wasting the seven minutes for your class. So Hopefully your list can be super duper long. We'll see what happens. Here we go. Okay, so now that we have a big list on things that we could possibly use for our mood mask, we have a big list of moods or emotions or feelings. Now we're actually going to be working on our mask. So on the back, Somewhere in the middle part, not up here, because you're going to be cutting that part out. You're going to be cutting that part out. You're going to be cutting this, cutting this. So somewhere in the middle, you want to put your name. So I'm going to put Siati. You want to put your class. So I'm going to put one Z because there is no one Z. And the third thing that you have to write on here is whatever emotion that you choose from our list. So you can choose anything that you want. I am going to choose happy because that was the example that I gave. That does not mean that you should choose happy. You should definitely choose something else. Well, you can choose happy if you want, but you can also choose whatever emotion we came up with on our list. So now I'm going to flip this over and I have to figure out how to do happy eyebrows because everybody has to have eyebrows. So if you chose how to do mad, you have to do mad eyebrows. So what do mad eyebrows look like? Eyebrows can be very, very expressive. And I think those are pretty happy. They're a big arch. If I just stopped right there and went like this, that would look really mad. You know how people look mad like that? But I'm not doing mad, so I can't do mad eyebrows. I have to do happy eyebrows. So I think with these big arches, they look like happy eyebrows. Now, the next part I think is the toughest part. You have to do a happy, whatever your emotion is, you have to do that kind of nose. So what is a happy nose? I don't know. Maybe it's a big thing like this. Maybe a angry nose is like a dog nose. You know how dog noses go like that? Maybe that's an angry nose. I don't know. Maybe an angry nose is like that. Whatever it is, it has to be in a closed shape. It can't just be a line like that, okay? So maybe that is a mad nose like that. I don't know. You could have anything that you think conveys that emotion. So happy mouth is pretty easy. So I can do a happy mouth real big like this. Remember, it cannot be just a line. It has to be an enclosed shape so that we can um, color inside here, we can paint inside here, whatever. Okay, so now that I have my, my eyebrows, my nose, and my mouth, I am done with that part. The first part is done. Now, the second part that and the last part that we're going to do today is that we're going to section this mask off into sections. We talked about the African mask being sectioned in the video. Um, I am going to do some simple sectioning. You can copy whichever one speaks to you. None of these have emotions. So you can pick whatever sectioning you want. You should have three sections when you are done. So I'm going to do this one, just straight lines going down. And obviously, if there's, if there's an eyebrow here or whatever, you're going to stop at the eyebrow, continue, stop at the nose. If you touch the nose, continue, stop at the mouth, continue after the mouth and go down. So you want three sections. I'm just going to go straight down. So three sections like this. That could be the one that you choose. You could also have three sections going this way. So I have a top section, a middle section, and a bottom section. You could do it that way. You could get super fancy and maybe have a section that goes like this 
and then comes back out like that goes like this these are all options that you could choose you could choose your own to do three sections you could have three sections that go diagonal like this and like this or the other way um you could have what else could you have i guess you could have like a a wavy line like especially if it went with your mood you could have a wavy line that goes like that and a wavy line down here that goes like that okay so you have a top a middle and a bottom section let's see what else can we have we could have zigzags that go down if you're like angry zigzags are a good line to show anger I'm trying to be symmetrical with these zigzags so they are um, because symmetry is a big part of African masks. Okay, so what else could I do? <laughs> oh, I could just do a curved line like this. That would be a good mad one because it kind of looks like a furrowed brow. And then if it's like this down here, that's like sad and mad. Um, the last one, maybe I want to do... I don't know. You think about the last one. You could do anything that you wanted. Okay, so those are several different things that you could choose to section off your mask. Hopefully you pick one of those or you come up with your own. You should have three sections. Okay, so if we have time, first I'm going to section off my mask. I think I'm just going to do the simple one right here that I talked about straight down. Notice I'm not going inside the eye or the eyebrow or the mouth. And I'm going to try to do it the same amount of space over here so that it's symmetrical. Okay, so now if you have time, we are going to be putting patterns in these three spaces. So figure out a pattern. Now, there's, there's two different kinds of patterns we are going to be using. Two of your sections are going to have one of the kinds and one of your section is going to have the other kind. So one kind of pattern we're going to be using is line pattern. The other kind of pattern we're going to be using is shape pattern. So you're either using line or you're using shape. You're not using both. So in any section. You are going to be using both, but like say this is going to be line, then this will be shape, then this will be line. Or this could be shape, and then this could be line, and then this could be shape. So you're going to have two of one kind, and you're going to have one of the other kind. Okay, so let's say I want to do line first. So I'm going to do a line design that is, maybe I'm going to get a little fancy. Um, yeah, so I'm going to do a line design that's kind of like this. It's not really fancy. It's just a line design. I'm just doing straight lines. You could do curved lines. You could do zigzag lines. You could do, I'm doing a diagonal line. Um, so you could do any kind of line you can think of. You can't do a dotted line because we're going to be painting in these different sections. Also, you don't want your lines to be too close together because we are going to be painting them. If they were like this close together, that would be so super hard to paint. That would be so frustrating and so hard to do. Don't make your life harder. So make your sections pretty far apart. This section to paint is going to be easier than painting those little tiny sections and staying within the lines. So this side is done. I think I'm going to do the same thing on the other side to keep it symmetrical. So I'm going to try to have the same width apart that I had on this side on this side. So I think that's pretty good, but it would come in here. This starts like right there. I think I'm doing it pretty symmetrical. Okay, and that's pretty good for the two line designs. Now I have to do a shape pattern in the middle. So what kind of shape 
do I want to do? Remember also you should not be doing anything really tiny like this. Tiny like that is gonna be super hard to paint. And after you paint that little tiny thing, you are not gonna know that that is a triangle and that that is a square. Unless you have a paintbrush that's like one bristle and you spend like an hour on each shape, you are not gonna be able to know what kind of shape that is. So please make your shapes pretty big. Okay, so I think I'm gonna do a circle pattern and I think I'm going to try to make them go a little bit smaller and then go back to being a little bit bigger and maybe this one is just going to be part of a circle. Okay, so I'm going to try to do the same thing on the other side. Like this one right here is a little too small. I don't know if I'm gonna do well on that one. And that's just part of the bigger circle. And then maybe I'm going to also go up with this and do some circles. Now I have to have some circles down here too, so maybe I'm gonna do a smaller circle here, then get bigger here, then get smaller here. This is all a circle pattern. Maybe I'm going to have like a circle mustache. That would be pretty cool. Remember, don't do them too small. So I'm doing them pretty big. These are like medium sized ones. They're not really big, they're medium. And I have one more and that one goes off the page a little bit. And then on the chin, I'll probably do more circles that are medium. Maybe I'll do one big one right here and then medium and medium and I'm done. Okay, so I have a line design right here. I have a circle design right here. And I have a line design right here. These are all patterns. Line pattern, circle pattern, line pattern. And when we get to coloring this with paint, it's going to be fantastic. So you can choose. You don't have to do a diagonal line. You can do any kind of line you want. I hope that you don't do a circle. I hope you pick your own shape that you can do anything that you want. You could even use two different kinds of shapes and make a pattern out of it if you know how to do that. So I will leave that up to you. Okay, and that is it for today. Good luck.